Hello, 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 Martin here with another property clinic. Yes, your chance to ask me questions about anything and everything. Sometimes to do with property, sometimes not. It doesn't matter, whatever you want. And make sure you like this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel and make sure you ask me your questions on a Monday. Ask Martin Monday, the hashtag on my Twitter, which is at TV Martin Roberts. How are you doing? Faring reasonably well, as well as can be expected, I hope. Let's go on with some questions. Ollie Key. Hello, Ollie. What are your thoughts on adding a garden room, garden office in terms of adding value to a property? It seems a popular thing to do at the moment. Absolutely. One of the things that lockdown has taught us all is that we need more space and anything you can do to create more, say, office space or home office space, that's definitely something which people are wanting these days. Not a lot of effort necessarily. You could even just, you know, get a sort of jazzy shed or get a normal shed and spend some time damp proofing it and, and putting electricity in stuff like that, obviously with that uh, qualified electrician to help you uh, into it. Or yeah, a garden office, a lovely idea, really lovely idea. I mean, who wouldn't, who wouldn't like the idea of that? So they are definitely something which people are wanting these days. So definitely a good idea to do. Danny Clary, uh, what's the minimum size you can get away with calling something a bedroom? So there are minimum sizes. If you're renting out the property as an HMO, as in a house of multiple occupation, then each bedroom needs to be a certain size. Now, I don't know off the top of my head, but you can Google it and find out, right? But there's a different size for a bedroom which has to have one person in it uh, and a bedroom which has to have two people in it. And so if you're doing it for that reason, then there are minimums. Now, in terms of just in general, I guess the definition of a bedroom is you have to get a bed in there. And you do find that people do stretch that a little bit. Um, and, you know, rooms that would just really not be a good place to spend a lot of time other than completely sleeping would um, get away with being called a bedroom. So in houses, it, I don't think, strictly speaking, you, know, you, you can get away with it if you can get a bed in it. There's probably some legal thing, I don't know. But, um, but certainly when it comes to um, HMO, so it's definitely a legal minimum. You can get by Googling, because it does change. So that's one reason I don't want to particularly say. Old enough to know better. Hello, I would have to do better. In a world where those removable hanging strips didn't exist, what would be the best way to hang picture frames and photos on a wall of painted 50-year-old concrete in a high-rise flat with no drill available? Uh, um, how about training wood lice? Lots of them just kind of like group together and hold the thing up for you. Ah, uh, that's a possibility. Um, well, those removable hanging strips do exist, so I don't quite understand the question. Uh, I guess, you know, you'd be amazed. If you get those hanging nails, okay, I don't know what they're made out of, but it's like titanium. You know the little black ones with a fairly, with the goldish colored head, and you can whack those into most things, even concrete. So I would give it a go. Don't assume that that's not gonna work. I think it, yeah, it's definitely a possibility. Wendy Clark, hello Wendy, do you have any phobias? Ooh. Well, I do. I am absolutely paranoid about, par paranoid? paranoid about wasps. I hate wasps, oh my God. And it's really weird because similar flying insects, which look almost identical, like a small wild bee or that kind of fly thing, which looks a bit like a wasp because it copies a wasp so that people don't go near it, but isn't a wasp. But you can tell it's not a wasp because it flies slightly differently. If one of those flew in, I wouldn't care if one was there right now. I'd be like, yeah, sure, fly thing. Well, Mr. B, yeah, sure, land on my hand. I don't care. Wasp, bloody hate them. Nah. I think I was stung as a child <coughs> when I was in my cot by a wasp. And since then, just, I don't know, paranoia. It doesn't make any sense, is it? Well, it's paranoia, it's phobia, uh, rather. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense, but they're, they're, it's funny, isn't it? If they, all the, the whole thing I did in the jungle, they put snakes, they put rats, they put, um, you know, all sorts of creepy crawlies and things. It didn't matter, it was like, yeah, whatever, bring it on. If they if they'd had one wasp, in that underground cavern. I would have been a wreck. Thank God they didn't know. It's wasps, Wendy. Definitely. David Hartlett. Hallett. Having a go. Why do you only fasten the bottom button with your girl's jacket? I don't know. Why not? Apparently you're supposed to do the top button of your jacket. And that's the sartorial correct sartorial in dressing correct way of doing it. I don't know. I was prefer it looking the other way. Does it matter? I'm more interested in what I'm saying than what it will look like. But I apologise. Oh, hardly, David. Do not coming up to your high expectations. Um, Chris Pacelli, hello Chris. 
in the world of a selfie, when did anyone ask you for an autograph? You know what? I still occasionally get asked for my autograph. It is the de rigueur thing now, isn't it, to do selfies? Of course, you get a selfie, mate, yeah. Uh, and I always do. But it's actually <laughs> it's quite surprising how things have changed, isn't it? But it's, but it's quite nice when you get asked to do an autograph now. It's like, oh, it's all <laughs> And I have an autograph signature. Like, it's like a martyr with a smiley face. So, <laughs> very silly. Uh, Gary, hello, Gary. Gary McDonald, do I hate going to Stoke? No, of course not. Why would I hate going to Stoke? People are really friendly. Uh, Hazard's always interesting. Yeah, yeah, we get cups of tea, biscuits brought to us. Don't get that in other parts of the country necessarily. Yeah, uh, so bring it on. Toby J. Francis, France. Hello, Toby J. Francis. What do you think about airless paint sprays for interior use? Good idea or not worth the expense for a one-off reverb? You know what? I think stick to the old-fashioned techniques, rollers and stuff. Uh, it's just those, those sprayers, I'm sure they're fine. My concern is that they're, they're great the first time you use them, but then they clog up and they never work quite the same afterwards. And then when you come to patch up, unless you've got that thing, however you try to patch up won't quite look the same. <laughs> So there'll always be a bit of a mismatch. So mm, I'd stick with the try and tested techniques if I was you, Toby. They've been around for years for good reason. Lisa Bins, hello Lisa. Have you ever refused to go into a property because it's been disgusting? Mm, not because it's been disgusting, because it's been dangerous, yes. And we're not generally allowed in anyway. But disgusting, mm, just to put up with it, I'm afraid. I mean, you can go as you walk through the door, but not a lot we can do about that. Okay, Samantha Lawrence. What is the permitted development allowance for a single story extension? Hmm. I understand you can go out four meters, but what about width? Well, actually, it does depend on the amount you're extending the existing building by. Um, and there are, there are various limitations to what you can do going backwards, as into the back of the property, but also to the side. Permitted development is where you don't have to apply for planning permission. However, you do need to apply for building regulations approval. So you can't just build willy-nilly. You need to definitely apply for building regulations, which means that somebody's checking you're doing it right, okay? Uh, but there are, if you go on the government planning portal, which is, I don't know, just bring planning portal into Google, uh, it'll come up and the exact things there, because there's quite a few variations on it. But you're right that it gives four meters if it's a single story at the back, but again, it depends. And it's also on, it depends on how much of the garden it takes up and da 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 So check it out on the Government Planning Portal website. Danny Clary, hello Danny. Where is the most remote place you've been for a property? Ooh, well, uh, from the homes in the Hammer, we went to the Orkney Isles, right there at the top of Scotland, and flew in by plane. Zoom. And uh, it was amazing. And when we arrived, it was very funny. <laughs> the man who met us at the airport was, was the baggage handler. He was the air traffic controller. He was security guard and everything. So he met us at the bottom of the steps. And uh, he said, ah, what are you here to do? And I said, we're here from Hums and the Hammer. And he said, which house are you going to visit? And we said, well, we've got not too many details, but it's that one, you know, one somewhere, we named, named the place roughly, you know, the area. He said, ah, it'll be such and such and such as this house. Yes. You know what's happened to them? Yeah, well, um, their brother and sister, uh, and they fell out with their parents, and, and uh, there was a heck of a man. And it went into this whole thing about this whole family and why the house ended up on the market. It was like, oh, my golly gosh. Talk about, you know, small places. Everyone knows everybody and what's going on. But, yeah, so the Orkney House, and it was absolutely stunningly beautiful. I mean, if you've not been there, it was amazing. But, uh, but yeah, that was the first we've been for, for, uh, for uh, yeah. Uh, GSB out. Have you or Dion or Martel ever found a house with stairs that don't end up leading to a bedroom? Yeah, one's down to the cellar. <laughs> That's Dion's catchphrase, isn't it? Louisa Nolan. Hello, Martin, how are you? How, I'm all right. How do you choose the music for Homes and Family? It's completely brilliant. And let me know if you have a vacancy. Okay, I'll do. It's the editors. They're the ones who do it. They just sit down in a darkened room with obviously some strange and interesting program on their computers that allows them to find these tracks which have very little re relevance <laughs> to um, what you might think and then end up being perfect for the show. So yeah, they do a great job. Not my real name. Hello, not my real name. Who's your favourite celebrity chef? Ooh, interesting. Well, I have to say, it goes back years because I used to love Keith Floyd only because he was so anarchic. And I think, didn't he start the whole celebrity chef thing with his sort of traveling around the world and doing these amazing things? Well, maybe not started it. I'm sure there was somebody before him, but um, I loved his style and his cameraman who he used to talk to, sort of breaking that rule. First person to sort of do it 
So I like him nowadays. I guess Jamie Oliver, good guy. Um, quite like James Martin. So yeah, and actually, I tell you what, I've just recently got into Celebrity Bake Off. Never really watched it before, but actually, it's good in it. <laughs> I suppose that's why it's done so well. Duh. But um, yeah, so I've been quite enjoying enjoying Celebrity Bake Off. Bob, do you regret going on a celebrity? Absolutely not. It was amazing. Uh, it was one of the best things I've ever done. So uh, not at all. And some of the memories from that will just stay, stay with me forever. Tom Belt. Hello, Tom. Have you got the new Idols album yet? No. Listen, here's the thing. Um, last Christmas, I did a thing for a charity in Bristol, a uh, charity of the homeless. And it's a brilliant thing called Give a Shit Christmas. And interesting enough, Banksy, yeah, him, the graffiti artist, amazing. Uh, he actually designed the logo for it and mentioned the fact that I was going to be doing this thing. So I actually reckon Banksy might have written my name up, which is just amazing. Um, but we did this um, charity event in Bristol and um, one of the, the headline act was Idols. And um, I have to say, I, I wasn't that au fait with the Idols beforehand. They were unbelievable live. Oh my gosh. Now, I'm not sure the sort of music I will listen to, listen to on a Sunday morning, but so much energy, so much just passion, and live they were fantastic. So if you get to go and see them, yeah, go see them. Energy beyond belief. So that's it for this week. If you've enjoyed this, do like the, this uh, video. Make sure you uh, subscribe to the channel. And uh, do tune in on a Monday on my Twitter account, Ash, Ask Martin Monday. No, what? Hashtag Ask Martin Monday on, on at TV Martin Roberts. And I'll be back with all of this next week.